Hi, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this adorable sea turtle memory game. I got this idea from a post I saw on Instagram, and I just thought it was the most adorable thing. I absolutely love turtles, and I think it's such a great gift for kids. My daughter is only seven months old, but she already absolutely loves playing with these little turtles. And I know that my older kids are going to love playing this game when they're home with us. And I just have a thing for turtles. If you could see into my house, you will see I have turtles scattered all over the place. I have been into turtles since I was a very young girl, especially sea turtles. And so this was right up my alley. I just had to recreate this memory game into the sea turtle version. And that is what we're going to make today. To get started with this project, we're going to be using all number four weight acrylic yarn. You're going to want six to ten colors of different primary colors that you're going to be using for your matching game colors. And then two colors for your turtle's back, plus a neutral color for the turtle's body. We're using a five millimeter crochet hook, and then you'll also need some scissors and a crochet needle. You're also going to want to have a hot glue gun. This part's optional. I use it for the safety eyes for additional safety. A button, and then two safety eyes for the turtle's eyes. And here we have the little safety eye backings. And that's what I use my hot glue gun for, but that's optional. And then some cotton stuffing to stuff your baby sea turtles. We're going to start by making a magic ring with our turtle body color. And into the magic ring you're going to chain two. Chaining two does not count as a stitch. And then you're going to place 12 double crochets into your magic ring. After you have your 12 double crochets in your magic ring, just pull that string to pull the magic ring tight and then you're going to slip stitch into the first double crochet to close off that first row. And then chain two. Again, chaining two does not count as a stitch. Back into that very same stitch, you're going to place two double crochets. And then you're going to put two double crochets into every stitch around. Once you've finished there, slip stitch it back into the very first double crochet to close off row two and chain two. You're going to place two double crochets into that very first stitch and then one double crochet into the next stitch and you're going to repeat that all the way around. Two double crochets into one stitch and then one double crochet into the next stitch and repeat that all the way around. You'll be finishing round three with one double crochet into that last stitch and then slip stitch to close the round. For round four, you're going to chain two and then place two double crochet into the very same stitch and then do one double crochet into the next two stitches. And that'll be the sequence you're going to repeat all the way around, placing two double crochets into one stitch and then one double crochet into the next two stitches. Round four is finished with two separate double crochets and then you'll slip stitch back into the very first double crochet of that round to close the round. Round five, chain two, and then place two double crochets into that very same stitch, followed by one double crochet into the next three stitches. And you will repeat that all the way around, two double crochets into one stitch, followed by one double crochet into the next three stitches. And repeat that all the way around. Round five is finished with one double crochet into the last three stitches and then do a slip stitch to close the round. Mm -hmm. 
round six, chain two, and then place two double crochets into that very same stitch, followed by one double crochet into the next four stitches, and then you will repeat that all the way around, two double crochets into one stitch, followed by one double crochet into the next four stitches. Round six is finished with one double crochet into the last four stitches, and then do a slip stitch into the very first double crochet of that round to close the round. For round seven, chain two, and then place two double crochets into the very same stitch, followed by one double crochet into the next five stitches, and repeat that all the way around two double crochets into one stitch, and then one double crochet into the following five stitches, and repeat that all the way around. Round seven is finished with placing one double crochet into the last five stitches, and then slip stitch into that very first double crochet of the round to close the round. For round eight, chain two, and then place two double crochets into the very same stitch, followed by one double crochet into the following six stitches, and repeat that all the way around. Two double crochets into one stitch, followed by one double crochet into the following six stitches, and repeat that all the way around. Round eight is finished with one double crochet into the last six stitches, and then you'll slip stitch into the very first double crochet of that round to close the round. Before we fasten off, we're gonna go ahead and make our tail. To make the tail, chain two, and then place a double crochet into the same stitch, and then do one double crochet into the next two stitches. Then you're going to chain two and turn, and then double crochet two together. And this is where you'll fasten off and cut your yarn. We have our body finished with the tail in place, and now we're going to move on to make our legs. To make the first front leg, you're going to begin by making a slip knot and then chain 19. Into the first loop from your hook, you're going to place a single crochet, followed by three more single crochets. So you'll have a total of four single crochets. And then follow your four single crochets with six half double crochets into the next six stitches. And after your six half double crochets, you're going to complete the last eight stitches with eight double crochets. When you get to the end of row one, chain two and turn. And for row two, you're going to do four double crochets and then double crochet two together. So again, it's one double crochet into the first four stitches and then the next two stitches, you're going to double crochet two together. And that is followed by four half double crochets. So after you double crochet your two stitches together, 
the next four stitches, each get one half double crochet. And then the next two stitches, you will half double crochet two together and repeat that. The next two stitches, you will half double crochet two together. And then you complete row two with four single crochets. When you finish row two, you're not going to do any chains. You're just going to turn your work and then do three slip stitches into the first three stitches on row three. After you do three slip stitches, you're going to do three single crochet. And then you're going to finish row three with nine half double crochets. And then you'll fasten off. The first front leg is complete. When you cut your yarn, make sure to leave enough length to sew the leg onto the body. And then you'll repeat the exact same steps for the second front leg. To make the first back leg, make a slip knot and then chain nine. For row one, into the second chain from your hook, make a double crochet and then you're going to make six more double crochets. You'll have a total of seven double crochets for row one. Then chain one and turn. For row two, you're going to do seven single crochets across. Chain two and turn. And for row three, which is your final row, you'll be doing seven double crochets across and then fasten off, making sure to cut a long enough string on the end to sew the leg onto the main body. And then repeat for the second back leg. Now we're going to weave in our ends on the main body. Weave in the tail end. And then on all of your legs, you're going to weave in all of the short little ends. And then with the long piece of yarn that you left when you fastened off on each leg, sew those onto the main body. I'm sewing each back leg onto the body beginning on the seventh stitch from the tail. So there are six stitches in between the tail and the back leg. Then repeat that with the other back leg on the other side of the tail with six stitches in between and go ahead and weave in your ends from your rear legs. Then we're going to sew the front legs on. The front legs are sewn with 14 stitches between the back leg and the front leg. So I attach it in the 15th stitch from the back leg. And go ahead and weave in your front leg ends after you've sewn that on. Now we're going to get started with the head. Make a magic ring and chain two again Chaining two does not count as a stitch, and then make 12 double crochet into your magic ring. Once you have your 12 double crochet, go ahead and pull that string to make your magic ring tight, and then slip stitch into the very first double crochet to close off the first round. For round two, chain one and then do two single crochet into that very same stitch 
and you're going to do two single crochets into every stitch around. When you get to the end, go ahead and do a slip stitch into the very first single crochet. Chain one, and for rounds three through eight, you're simply going to do 24 single crochet all the way around. For rounds nine and ten, you're going to be doing two single crochet, then a single crochet decrease, followed by two single crochet, and a single crochet decrease into the next two stitches, and you will repeat that all the way around, two single crochets, followed by a single crochet decrease. And you repeat that on both rounds nine and ten. Once you have finished round 10, we're going to go ahead and place our eyes. I place my eyes between rows 5 and 6, and I place each of them approximately 6 stitches apart. When I place in my eye, I like to put in a little smudge of hot glue before I place on the back safety for the safety eyes just for additional safety if little ones might be playing with it to make sure they don't accidentally pull off these eyes because they would be a choking hazard. So just place each of your eyes again between rows five and six and about six stitches apart from each other. The hot glue is completely optional but I like to be extra safe when this game is going to be played with by any little ones, especially if somebody younger than three will have their hands on it. For rows 11 through 16, you're going to do 14 single crochets all the way around. And when you get to row 16, that is your last row for the head, you can go ahead and fasten off. Make sure you're leaving a long enough end when you cut your yarn to sew the head onto the main body. Before we sew the head onto the body, we're going to go ahead and give it a little stuffing. Don't overstuff it. Just get enough stuffing into the head. I like to leave the neck with not very much stuffing in it so that it just kind of goes flat and then sew the head centered between the two front legs. When I'm finished sewing the head on, go ahead and weave your end. Now for the back, we're going to start with your first back color and make a magic ring. Chain two, once again, chaining two does not count as a stitch. And for round one, we're going to place two, I'm sorry, we're going to place 12 double crochets into the magic ring. Once you have your 12 double crochets on your magic ring, go ahead and pull that string to tighten your ring, and then do a slip stitch into the first double crochet of round one to close the round. Round two, you're going to chain two, and then do two double crochet into the very same stitch, and then do two double crochet into every stitch around. When you get to the end, you're going to begin doing your slip stitch, but this is where we're going to change colors. So just pull that yarn through, let it hang to the side, and get your other back color if you are doing a two-toned back like I have done. If you want to do a single color, then you'll just continue on. So this is where I add in the other color and use the new color to complete your slip stitch, and then chain two. Then you're going to do two double crochet into the very same stitch, 
and then one double crochet into the next stitch and you're going to repeat that all the way around. Two double crochet into one stitch, one double crochet into the next stitch, repeat that all the way around. I go ahead and crochet right over my new little color tail so that I don't have to weave it in later. When you have finished round three, then you're going to join with a slip stitch. Chain two and place two double crochet into the very same stitch and then do one double crochet into each of the next two stitches and you'll repeat that all the way around. Two double crochets into one stitch and then one double crochet into the following two stitches. And repeat that all the way around. You'll complete round four with two or one double crochet in the last two stitches and then do a slip stitch to join but you will only start your slip stitch and then we're going to grab that first back color and pull that through to complete the, the slip stitch and then chain two. Into the very same stitch we're going to place two double crochet using the first back color and followed by that two double crochet in the same stitch place, <coughs> place one double crochet into the following three stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Two double crochets into the same stitch and then one double crochet into the following three stitches and repeat that all the way around. You'll finish round five with one double crochet into the last three stitches and then do a slip stitch to join. For round six, chain two, do two double crochet into that very same stitch, followed by one double crochet into the following four stitches, and repeat that all the way around. Two double crochets into one stitch, and then one double crochet into the following four stitches, and repeat that all the way around. Round six is completed with one double crochet into the last four stitches and this is our last row using this back color so when you get to the end you will begin your slip stitch to close the round go ahead and cut that yarn since we're finished using this color and then get your other back color pull it up to complete your slip stitch and then chain two Round seven, begin with two double crochets into the very same stitch that you did your chain two, followed by one double crochet into the following five stitches, and you're gonna repeat that all the way around. Two double crochets into one stitch, followed by one double crochet into the next five stitches. Again, I am crocheting right over my tail that I cut off my string that I cut off from the previous row so that I don't have to weave it in later. And repeat that all the way around. Two double crochets into one stitch, followed by one double crochet into the next five stitches. Round seven is completed with one double crochet into the last five stitches, and then you're gonna do a slip stitch to join the round slip stitch into the very first double crochet of that round and for round eight chain two and do two double crochet into the same stitch followed by one double crochet into the following six stitches and you're going to repeat that all the way around two double crochets into one stitch followed by one double crochet into the next six stitches and repeat that all the way around Round six will end with one double crochet into the last six stitches, and then you'll do a slip stitch into the very first double crochet of that round to close the round. Round nine, chain one, and then do one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. When you reach the end of round nine, 
do a slip stitch into the very first stitch of that row to close the round. Round 10, we're going to do a pico stitch into every other stitch. So don't chain one and into the next stitch, do a single crochet, chain two, and then slip stitch back into that same stitch. Then you're going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch, into the stitch after that, do a single crochet, chain two, slip stitch back into the same stitch, and then slip stitch into the next stitch. So for our pico stitch, you're going to do a single crochet and then chain two, slip stitch back into that same stitch, and then slip stitch into the next stitch. One more time, do a single crochet, chain two, slip stitch back into that same stitch, and then slip stitch into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that all the way around, doing your pico stitch into every other stitch. When you do your last pico stitch on this round, you're going to finish it off with two slip stitches. And when you finish your last, when you finish the last slip stitch, go ahead and fasten off and leave a very nice long end on this yarn so that you have enough to sew it on to the main body. Go ahead and weave in your tail from the middle of your magic ring on the back. And then after you've weaved in your end here, then we're going to go ahead and sew the back onto the body. The section between the back legs is what remains open for the babies to go in and out. So starting from the end of one back leg, the end that's closest to the tail, starting from that leg, begin sewing your back. Just one stitch into each stitch since there's the same number of stitches around each one and sew your back onto the main body. I sew into the single crochet row, that way the little pico stitches are hanging over the edge. And you're going to sew all the way around the body until you reach the end of the other back leg, leaving the section between the back legs open for the babies. When you reach that second back leg, then go ahead and weave in your end and cut your yarn. Now we just need to sew the button onto the tail. And after we have sewed our button onto the tail and cut off our little button ends, then this mama turtle is finished. fasten the button, you just use one of the stitches in your last double crochet row on the back, and the mama turtle is done. So now let me show you how to make these cute little babies. You're going to begin by getting one of your primary colors and make a magic ring. Chain two, again, chaining two does not count as a stitch and then put 12 double crochets into your magic ring. Once you have your 12 double crochets in your magic ring, go ahead and pull that magic ring end to make it tight, and then slip stitch into the first double crochet. Well, you're gonna begin your slip stitch into the first double crochet because you are finished with this color of yarn. So go ahead and cut the yarn and then you're going to grab the body color and pull that in to complete your slip stitch and then chain one and round two you're going to do two single crochets into the very same stitch that you just did your chain one and then do two single crochets in every stitch around. 
again I crochet right over the little tail that we just cut off and the tail that I have for adding in the body color. I just hold on to those and I single crochet right over them so that I don't have to weave them in later. You really just have to single crochet over them for a few stitches and then you can tuck them to the back. They will be hidden on the inside of the back. We do two single crochet two single crochets in every stitch around. When you reach the end of round two, slip stitch into the first single crochet of that round to join the round. For round three, you are not going to chain anything. You're going to yarn over and then into the next stitch do a half double crochet into that very same stitch you're going to then do a double crochet and then you're going to do a triple crochet and then again into that very same stitch do another double crochet and another half double crochet and all of that is into the very same stitch for the little baby turtle head into the next stitch you're going to do a slip stitch and then you're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches as well. So you have three slip stitches. After you do your third slip stitch, chain four for the first front leg. Then you're gonna do a single crochet in the first chain from your hook, and do a half double crochet in that second chain, and then do a double crochet into the last little chain, and then into the very next stitch on the main body, do a slip stitch and you're going to slip stitch into the next six stitches. You will have six total slip stitches. And this is where I don't really worry if I have like five slip stitches or six slip stitches. I kind of just look at the, the body of the turtle and place that back leg where it looks right, but it's usually five to six stitches. And for the back leg on the stitch that you did your sixth slip stitch into that very same stitch do a double crochet and then that very same stitch do a second double crochet and then slip stitch back into that very same stitch and then you're going to continue and do seven slip stitches between each of the back legs Into that seventh slip stitch, then yarn over and do a double crochet into the same stitch. Do a second double crochet into the same stitch. And then slip stitch back into the same stitch for the second back baby turtle leg. And then you're going to do five slip stitches between this back turtle leg and the next front leg. So slip stitch into the next five stitches. And then into that fifth slip stitch, I'm going to chain four. And then on the first ring from your hook, do a single crochet. In the next chain, do a half double crochet. And in the last little chain, do a double crochet for the last front little baby turtle leg. After the double crochet, you're going to slip stitch into the, to the last three stitches and then fasten off. Once you fasten off here, then you have finished the base of your baby turtle. Little baby turtle body is finished. Isn't he cute? Love these little babies. So go ahead and weave in your end. And once you weave in your ends and cut the yarn off, then we will make the little baby turtle back. So 
So going back to our back colors that we used for the mama turtle, I did dark green in the middle, then light green, and I'm going to repeat the same for the babies. So with your first back color, make a magic ring. <coughs> and then chain two. After you chain two, make 12 double crochets into your magic ring. Once you have completed your 12 double crochets into your magic ring, go ahead and pull that string to tighten your magic ring. And this is where we're going to switch to the next back color. So begin your slip stitch and get your hook through that first loop in the first double crochet and then cut your yarn and go ahead and pull the other back color of yarn and use the other back color to complete your slip stitch. And for round two, you're going to chain one and do two single crochet into the very same stitch and then do two single crochet into every stitch around. Again, I single crochet right over my little tails of yarn so that I don't have to weave them in later. So do two single crochet into every stitch around. When you reach the end of round two, go ahead and slip stitch to close the round. And for round three, chain one and then do 24 single crochet. It's one single crochet into every stitch around. When you reach the end, go ahead and do your slip stitch and then fasten off, leaving a long tail of yarn to sew the back onto the little body. Go ahead and weave in the end from the middle of the magic ring. Weave that in, pull it tight, and then we'll be ready to sew the back onto the little baby body. You can choose anywhere to begin sewing, but I always start from the head and just sew your back onto the body going all the way around. And before you complete, when you have just a little hole left, then go ahead and stuff the body. This is where I like to get all those little yarn scraps so they don't just get thrown away. But stuff your little body, don't overstuff him, and then you can finish sewing the back onto the body. And once you have finished going all the way around, then go ahead and just slide that little piece of yarn. Instead of weaving it in, I like to just slide it through the baby's back and then cut the other end off hide that tail in there and your baby is finished and so you're just going to repeat this with however many number of babies you want I like to do 16 that way I have four rows of four but you do two of each color and you can do as many as you want anywhere from 12 to 20 is good depending on the age of the child but like I said I like to do 16 then you have four rows of four and makes a good complete set and I like to do this to where I crochet all of the little bodies and all the little backs and then just sew them all on in one go rather than making each individual baby to completion and you can do it whichever way you like you can make each baby one at a time or you can do it like me and complete all of your little baby bodies and then do all the little backs and do kind of an assembly line to get them all sewed on and stuffed. And here I am stuffing or sewing on the back to my last and final little baby body. And this set is now finished once I fasten off 
this last little baby body. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I hope you had fun making this turtle memory game sea turtle game set. I think they're the cutest things ever. I love turtles and I think these are so fun to make and I hope you had as much fun as I did. Again, thank you so much for watching. Isn't the mama so cute with all her little babies? So once they're all done, you can just stuff them on in there and get the kids, wrap it up for a gift, whatever you're gonna do. But thank you so much for making this sea turtle memory game with me. I don't make crochet tutorials. Actually, this is my very first one. So I hope it was easy enough to follow and understand. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you on the next video. Please do subscribe. I will have <coughs> more crochet tutorials coming. I'm going to start a crochet tutorial playlist, but it's definitely not what I do for all of my videos. But if you are a crocheter and like tutorials, then please do subscribe because I will be putting out a tutorial, oh, maybe once a month or every couple of months. And Crochet is just so much fun, and if you're a homemaker and you don't crochet, then you might want to pick it up because it's super fun, and otherwise you can just skip my crochet tutorials because I'm still going to be putting out all of my regular homemaking content, and I will see you next week. God bless you. Have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for watching.